we will have uh, two more presentations on this session, and then we'll open for questions and answers. I would like to bring to the podium Joaquin Jake Perez, has over 31 years of experience in transportation and structural engineering projects, including airport, mass transit, highway, bridges, and he will be talking specifically about the issues of the bridges in Cuba. So welcome. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, my name is Joaquin Perez. Uh, I am Cuban. I was born in La Habana, Cuba. We lived in Camagüey, and I've been living here in exile for 52 years. <clears throat> my presentation today is on the assessment for the reconstruction of the bridges in Cuba. I want to recognize that there's been several uh, studies done in the transportation assessment um, in general. Uh, one done by uh, Dr. Cerejo, the Cuban Economy for a Blueprint of Reconstruction, where Dr. Cerejo was the organizer of that. And also recently, a transportation infrastructure assessment done by uh, Carlos Penin and Sergio Alfonso. Um, the study encompassed all modes of transportation highways, airports, railroads, seaports, and mass transit. And our presentation today will focus on a vital component of the highway and railroad system, and that is the bridges that links everything together. Bridges are a vital link for transporting goods and services along highways and railways. Without an adequate transportation system, there is no opportunity for economic growth. It's an economic engine. This is the map of Cuba, their roadway system. It's just a snapshot of uh, La Habana and just south of La Habana. Uh, Cuba has around 19,000 miles of unpaved road, about 18,000 miles of paved road, and about 569 miles of what they call a motorway or a limited access facility. Uh, the most uh, known and oldest one, uh, limited access facility, is the Carretera Central, which goes from Pinal del Rio to Santiago. They also have seven more limited access facilities. All these limited access facilities plus the paved and unpaved roads total approximately 38,370 what they call centerline miles of road. They also have a railway system, around 5,100 miles of, uh, of railway. And we'll have to consider the bridges on the railways as well. The first thing is to try to understand what condition they're in in order to do an assessment for the reconstruction. We would have to inventory all the bridge structures, including the highways and the railroad bridges. Then we'd have to develop a reconstruction approach. You know, hopefully it's a program that will consider maintenance, repair replacement, and then expansion for the future. It could be done in three phases. An initial phase in the first two to five years, which is uh, mostly understanding what condition they're in, doing the inspections, and then uh, doing any kind of emergency repair to get the system to, to operate. By then, then you establish a maintenance and rehabilitation program uh, within the next five to 10 years where you're uh, constantly repairing and replacing the system to bring it up to standards. And then the final phase, which you would have started planning since the beginning, but now you start planning, now you start implementing new construction, new bridges, and replacement structures. In order to understand the economic impact um, of the reconstruction of the bridges, we'd have to compare it to the state of Florida. For example, geographically, we're pretty similar. Uh, Florida and Cuba, Cuba's a little thinner, Florida's a little fatter. Uh, but population-wise, uh, there's about 19 million people in Florida. Cuba has about 12 million. Roadway center lines, Florida has 121,000. Cuba has 38,000. In conclusion, Florida has twice as many railroads per capita. I'm sorry, not railroads, roads per capita. So knowing that information and knowing that in Florida there's about 11,100 bridges, we can guesstimate that there's about 6,000 bridges in Cuba, <clears throat> including the 450 from the railroad bridges. We also know from Florida that the yearly maintenance cost is around 700 to $800 million a year. 
That includes replacement structures. So we assumed about half of that would be uh, Cuba's cost, about 350 million to 400 million per year in maintenance and replacement cost. Florida has a work program which totals $7.4 billion a year. <clears throat> Under that program, there's about 380 million for bridges, repairs, and replacement. And they also have a capacity improvement, which includes the new bridges for $2.7 billion a year. But that also includes the roadways. But looking at the uh, bridge repairs, 380 million, about half of that <clears throat> would be what we would assume would be required in Cuba plus the 150 million in maintenance equals about $350 million per year, or in the first five years, you're looking at about a $1.75 billion investment just to get the bridges running. In the first 10 years, there would be an average of about $400 million per year in maintenance and repairs, or a total of $4 billion of investment. After the initial 10 years, you'd still have to maintain the bridges. The costs with inflation would run about 400 to 500 million dollars per year. Now you would bring in the capacity improvements because now you're you're at year 11, so now you start building new structures. So the capacity improvements would require at least 300 to 350 million per year, or you're looking at a total of about 700 million to 800 million dollars per year to keep the system running and start adding new uh, capacity to the system. <clears throat> all in all, you're looking then at an initial investment in the first 10 years of $4 billion and 700 to 800 million in maintenance and capacity improvements. And that's my presentation today.